Hi there, and welcome to this online lecture introducing break-even analysis. I'm Gareth. A break-even analysis, also sometimes known as cost-volume profit analysis, um, is actually an application of marginal costing principles, which hopefully you've already encountered in this unit. If you remember, marginal costing is sometimes referred to as variable costing because marginal costing really focuses on those variable costs, the ones that will change in the short term. So if I produce a few more units, I will incur more material cost, for instance. We tend to ignore fixed costs on the basis that they won't change if I make a few more units. And as a result, marginal costing is generally considered to be very useful for short term decisions decisions that won't affect your fixed costs. If I produce a few more units today, I'm not going to pay my landlord any more rent. So we're really going to be focusing on marginal costing principles. And if you remember in marginal costing, we have the important concept of contribution. And contribution is the price we charge for the product we're selling less, just the variable costs of producing it. Now, break-even analysis is an important part of short-term decision-making. What do we mean by breaking even? Well, businesses, as I said, to achieve their break-even point if their revenues exactly cover their costs. If we break even, we make no profit and no loss. Our revenues exactly cover our costs, so we break even. If we exceed our break-even point, so if we produce more units, then we should make a profit. Now, there's actually a variety of break-even calculations you need to make sure you're comfortable with. There's an illustration I'll take you through to show you how the numbers work and then a little example that you can have a go at. So we've got business here selling a product for a price of £8.50 after incurring variable costs of £3.25 per unit. It then has monthly fixed costs of £630,000. And we're going to calculate four specific things here. We're going to look at the break-even point. Now, the break-even point is the number of units we'd need to sell in order to break even. We're then going to consider the break-even revenue, which is thinking about how many pounds worth of sales we'd need to generate in order to break even. We're then going to look at something called the margin of safety. You can probably imagine that breaking even, so making no profit and no loss, is not a very ambitious target for a business. We'd probably want to make some profit. We'd probably want to be operating above our break-even point. Now, the margin of safety is looking at how far below your budget could you fall before you stop making any money. And we're then going to think about the number of units that need to be sold to make an actual profit, in this case of £450,000 per month. Again, breaking even is not a particularly ambitious target. We might want to actually make some money. Well, let's work through these in turn, starting with the break-even point. Now, the break-even point, as we've said, is the number of units we'd need to sell in order to break even. So in order to exactly cover the fixed costs. We've got this fixed cost figure here of £630,000. We need to exactly cover that in order to break even. Now, for each unit we sell, we're generating a price of £8.50 and suffering variable costs of £3.25. So I can actually work out what my contribution per unit is. £8.50 less £3.25 is £5.25. That's the contribution we generate on each unit we sell. How many of those units would we need to sell to cover a total of £630,000 of fixed costs? Well, if we divide £630,000 by £5.25, it will tell us. So to calculate the break-even point, the calculation we use is we take the fixed costs that we need to cover, 630,000 in this example, and we divide by the contribution that each unit is generating. So the price less the variable cost in this case is our £5.25, and I think in this case I'd need to sell 120,000 units in order to break even. In fact, you can kind of work that up the other way. If you take 120,000 units and multiply back up by £5.25, that means I've made exactly 630,000 of total contribution, which exactly covers my fixed costs. So that's my break-even point calculation. 
fixed costs that we need to cover divided by the contribution per unit. Well, break-even point is in units. Break-even revenue will be in pounds. And the easiest way to work out the break-even revenue is to take the break-even point in units, so in this case 120,000 units that we just worked out, and multiply by the price of each unit. So in this case, we need to sell each unit for £8.50. If you multiply that up, that means that the revenue I'd be achieving to break even is £1,020,000. And we can actually do a sort of logical check of that. If I almost draw up a little profit and loss account here, well, we've just said that the revenue we'd be generating to break even is £1,020,000 units. That's at 120,000 units. The variable costs I would suffer at that level of production, well, it's 120,000 units that we'd be making. And do you remember we had the variable cost per unit of £3.25? So if I'm making 120,000 units at £3.25 per unit, that's a total variable cost of £390,000. If we then knock off the fixed costs that we would be incurring, now remember fixed costs have got nothing to do with the number of units, that's just at our £630,000 per month. If I work out the profit I've made, well, 1,020,000 revenue, less 390,000 of variable cost, less 630,000 of fixed cost, gives me exactly zero. I, I've exactly broken even, no profit, no loss. So I can do a little logical proof that the figures I've calculated appear to be accurate at 120,000 units, which translates to £1,020,000 of revenue. I have indeed exactly broken even. So that's the first couple of calculations. Well, we're then going to consider the margin of safety. So if I produce 120,000 units, I break even. I make no profit and no loss. But we were planning to budget for 200,000 units. That's obviously above the break-even point. Most businesses would probably be trying to earn a profit. Now, the margin of safety. It's the amount I can afford to fall below my budget before I stop making a profit. I think of it like a sort of safety net. Because if there's a recession in the economy, obviously I may not sell as many units as I was hoping to. I may fall below my budget. Well, how far below my budget can I afford to fall before I stop making any profit? Now, we can start by working out the margin of safety just in pure units figures, and it's just the difference between the budgeted volume and the break-even point. So if we're budgeting to sell 200,000 and we break even at 120,000, that's a margin of safety of 80,000 units. I can afford to fall up to 80,000 units below my budget, and I'd still make a profit. If I fall more than 80,000 units below budget, I'll make a loss. Now, that's showing the margin of safety in units, but it's also quite useful to show the margin of safety as a percentage of the budget. So the way we do this is we'd work out the margin of safety in units just as we've done, the 80,000, and then divide by the budgeted volume. So if you take 80,000 units, divide by the budget of 200, you get on your calculator a figure of 0.4. So if you multiply by 100 to convert it into a true percentage, I get a 40% margin of safety. That means I can afford to fall up to 40% below my budget before I stop making any profit. Now, again, that's quite useful. Um, if, for instance, we're expecting a recession next year, someday we might talk to an economist and they may say to us, well, we're expecting that volumes of sale are going to be down next year because of the recession. If they say that they're expecting volumes to be down by 30%, well, it's not great news, but we should still make a profit because that 30% is within our margin of safety of 40%. So margin of safety is looking at how far I can fall below my budget before I stop making any money. We then, in the final part of this illustration, we're looking at the sales we'd need to achieve to hit a target profit. Because again, budgeting at break even is not very ambitious. You'd probably be looking to actually make some money. Now, the easiest way to deal with a target profit figure is treat the target profit like it's another bit of fixed costs I need to cover. So, to work the figure out, it's almost like going back to the original calculation that we had. 
Remember where we started, where to work out a break-even point to make no profit, we take the fixed costs and we divide by the contribution per unit. It's very much like that calculation, just treat the target profit like another bit of fixed costs. And then divide by the contribution per unit, because we're still establishing how many units we'd need to sell. It's just this time, it's the number of units we'd need to sell to not just cover our fixed costs, but to also achieve this target profit. So in this example, we've got the fixed cost of 630,000, but we also want to cover 450,000 pound of profit. That means that the total contribution I generate needs to be at least 1,080,000. And if each unit is still generating the five pound 25, well, that gives us 205,714 units that I'd need to sell here to not just break even, but to also make a target profit. In fact, if you compare that back to the original break-even point we worked out, we worked at a break-even point at 120,000 units, didn't we? Now, that number of unit sales will cover our fixed costs and leave us with no profit. Can you see that if we want to make a profit, we're going to have to sell more units? That would seem sensible. Well, I've worked through the various calculations you might need to do there. So there's a little example here for you to have a practice. So why don't you pause me for five or ten minutes while you have a go at that? And then once you've got some figures together, why don't you restart me and we can compare notes. Well, first part of the question, working at the break-even point in units. Well, to work at the break-even point in units, you need to take the fixed costs that we need to cover, divide by the contribution each unit is delivering. So we've got fixed costs here of £420,000. And the contribution per unit is the selling price of £12.50 less the variable cost of £6.50 leave me with £6 per unit. If I'm generating a contribution of £6 from each unit, how many do I need to sell to cover £420,000 of fixed costs? I got a break-even point of 70,000 units for the first part of the question. Well, the second part is then asking for the break-even revenue. So how many pounds of revenue would our break-even point translate to? Easiest way to do that is to take the break-even point in units that we've just worked out and multiply by the price of each unit. And the price of each unit is £12.50. And that gives me a break-even revenue of £875,000 that I would need to be achieving. Well, the margin of safety, and we're specifically told to do it as a percentage here. If our budget is 100,000 units per month, how far could we afford to fall below that before we stop, stop making a profit, before we hit our break-even point? Well, if I start by working it out in units, so take the 100,000 budget less the break-even point of 70,000, we could afford to fall up to 30,000 units below our budget. But I want to show this as a percentage, and we'd always show it as a percentage of the budget figure. So if I divide 30,000 by 100,000 and multiply by 100 just to convert it into a percentage figure, I get 30% as my margin of safety here. And then the final part of the question, well, we've worked out that to break even, we'd need to sell 70,000 units. That leaves us with no profit and no loss. What if we actually want to make a profit of 120,000 per month here? We'll just treat the profit that we require as another element of fixed costs. So as well as covering £420,000 of monthly fixed costs, we also want to generate £120,000 of profit. That gives me a total of 540000 that I want to cover. And if it's still at £6 per unit contribution, I think I'd need to sell 90,000 units in order to meet that target profit. And you can see that the number of units to meet the target profit is greater than the number of units to make no profit, which kind of makes sense. You can almost imagine that the first 70,000 units are covering your fixed costs, and in this case, an additional 20,000 units are helping you to establish your actual profit.